Hi everyone, parents, carers, students, I uh, hope you're all well. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today for Year 9 Pathways um, at Hampstead Hall. My name's Mr Billingham, um, I'm overseeing uh, Year 9 Pathways. The purpose of this webinar is to make certain you're comfortable in terms of the choices you make regarding subjects. This is the second phase in this. Uh, year nine students had an assembly to launch the options process uh, before half term. And this is very much to make certain parents and carers are fully aware of what's involved with the options process. So hopefully uh, at the end of this webinar, you're, you're comfortable and confident in terms of the choices that you make and also um, that you make those correct um, calls in terms of the subjects which you make. In terms of uh, questions and interactions this evening, um, there's a there's a and a um, button on this webinar. Mr. Michael has joined us on this webinar. So if you put any questions into uh, the Q&A, Mr. Michael will be able to answer those for you as we go in um, through this webinar. OK, so any questions, please put them in the Q&A section. OK. OK, so firstly, uh, the, the journey we're going to go on. The first point I want to emphasise is contemplate this. I don't want any students to rush into things and then make uh, feel that they've regretted it, the choices that they've made. So please, please contemplate. Don't rush into things straight away. Um, there's lots of information available, which you'll hear about over the, uh, the, the, the forthcoming presentation. So please, please do your research and don't rush in and jump into making rash decisions. Look at all of the options available to you. The second point is this is your chance and this is your choice. So it's not about other people. It's very much about your future and you taking, um, grasping the chance that you're being given in terms of these subjects that's available to you. In terms of making it work, it's very much, you, you've heard the phrase in terms of leading a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. It's very much that scenario. So even though these opportunities are in place, none of them are easy options. And for you to be successful in life, you need to really put the work in um, and, and study um, conscientiously to ensure that you get the results in these subjects that you've picked to open up the doors um, post 16 when you're going on to the sixth form um, or apprenticeships. All of these subjects we talk about will have um, a number of opportunities which you, you can read about and hear about in, in terms of the uh, sources we will tell you about where you can access this um, because you want to know more information about all of the subjects which are available to you. So all of these opportunities, you need to grasp them because it will make the difference when you come to apply for six forms and then even the next steps when you go into university. So we're still looking at these grades. So it really does shape your future that you grasp these opportunities. And just those final two points, be the best you can be. Don't have any regrets. Um, so this comes back to a, a, a point I'm making a future slide. It's not about what other people are picking. It, it be the best you possibly can be. OK, so have confidence in yourself. Don't have any regrets regarding these choices which you make. OK, so things to consider. So what are your strengths and what areas of development can you uh, look at? So in when you are researching these options and looking at what you can pick, think about what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. Can you develop those to address those? So you want to pick um, things that are suited to your strength. And the next point there in terms of aptitude and personality, what is going to suit you? And again, what is going to suit you in terms of your learning styles? Do you work better in terms of practical work? Do you work better where there's more of coursework elements? Do you work, do you prefer linear exams, et cetera? Have a look at the type of courses they are. Um, and it will impact on how, how successful you are in, in all of those top three points, but particularly in your interest in passion. If you're picking subjects that you're not that keen on and that you're not that interested in, it's going to have an impact on how you work and the results you get. 
So as that bottom point says, it's not about what your friends do or whether you like the teach. That is the worst thing you can do. If you pick um, a subject purely because your friend's doing it or you pick a subject purely because you like the teacher, that is not a reason to do it. You need to think about your future. You need to think about what you want to do going forward. You need to think about what suits your strengths. So those are the considerations you need to be looking at when you're making these subject choices. Now, what I'm going to do now is just uh, play a, a brief video. This is taken from BBC Bite Size, which sort of explains um, in a little bit more detail the options process. How can you know which GCSEs to take? This quick guide will set you up for your academic adventures. In fact, you can learn everything you need to know about choosing your GCSEs in just 90 seconds. Start the clock. Most people take about nine GCSEs. A lot of courses and job roles require a score between nine and four in at least five subjects. But which subjects you'll need to take depends on what you want to do next. Maths, English and Science are the three core subjects that everyone must take. For English, you have to take English language, but the vast majority of schools require that you take English literature as well. Science can be done either as two combined science GCSEs or as three separate sciences. Some schools do make other subjects compulsory though, such as a foreign language or a humanity, so remember to check. These subjects are fundamental to your development. They'll teach you important skills and introduce you to key concepts that you'll need for the future. There are four exam boards that offer GCSEs in England. They might include different topics in their courses, but no matter what the board, a GCSE is still a GCSE. Some schools offer vocational qualifications that you can take alongside your GCSEs. They tend to be more practical with more coursework, which might suit you better. You might be able to change your subjects, but schedule clashes might stop you switching. So think hard before choosing. Resitting means doing an exam again to try and get a better grade. You can resit any subject, whatever your grade. Resits are held every year in November for English and Maths, or June for the other subjects. So, there you have it, everything you need to know about GCSEs in under 90 seconds. Whew, I'm gonna need some water. Okay, so some uh, information there regarding um, the number of um, options you pick, some information there regarding the new grading system, uh, the fact it's now numbers from nine to one, um, and also about examination boards that it was talking about there. In terms of for yourself to prepare to pick the right um, options, you need to establish the correct pathways. So there are three pathways which I'm going to talk about um, in a moment. It's important you read the guidelines. So the guidelines in the documentation, which I'm going to talk about, it's very much you read this carefully uh, and listen to the next few slides very carefully to ensure you are on the correct pathway and picking subjects which you're able to study. So the next point, find out about the subjects and courses you're interested in. There's a lot of information um, available on the website, which I'm going to talk about. But also the, the, the reason we've had this webinar today is because it's two days before um, parents evening. So parents evening on Thursday is perfect timing because any questions you have about a particular subject, you can ask those on Thursday. So it links nicely following on from this webinar. Uh, because you might not have all your questions answered. So when you look at the uh, videos and the booklets about the subject, you may still have questions to ask. Um, and that's the perfect opportunity on Thursday to ask those questions at parents' evening. Understand the course. So when you've looked at the information available, if, again, if you have any questions about the course, you can ask the teachers on Thursday. Discover which courses can help you progress onto your future pathway. So if you have a certain career in mind, does these courses um, get you onto uh, the, the pathway which you want? It's a little bit like working backwards with some of this, where you're looking into the future and then working backwards. So say, for example, you have a particular career in mind. 
if you if what what qualifications do you need for that career it might say you need a particular degree you then work your way back to look at the university to look at that degree how do you get onto that degree what qualifications do you need to get onto that degree and that might have a levels to get onto that so then you might look at the a levels uh, that you need how do you get onto those qualifications so it's it's working your ba way back from degree to a level or level three btec all the way to gcse and level two btec to ensure that you're on the correct pathway now to to get on to the degree that you want or to get into the career which you want decide which combination of subjects provide the right balance between academic creative and practical subjects a number of subjects are very academic you might want what might not want complete academic you might want a balance between having some academic qualifications but then have that balance with some creative and practical subjects and also source careers education information and guidance there's lots of uh, information available both from the careers within school, but also Birmingham Careers Hub, which is a free service for all students where you can access information online regarding um, a wide variety of careers. So those are some of the things you need to do in preparation before you pick uh, your options. So in terms of the time scale and what's uh, happening at the moment, so as I said, this is the second part. So year nine had an assembly on the 13th of February before half term. Then obviously today we've got the, the webinar. And then as I mentioned on Thursday, nicely following on from this will be the parents evening. Uh, once you've ha had all questions answered this evening and also on parents evening, you then have uh, a little bit of time before you have the final deadline of the 13th of March, where you have to have submitted your option choices. So you have un until the 13th of March to uh, submit your final option choices. So that is the, the key date there, the 13th of March to get your choices in. So I'll talk a little bit about how you do that in a moment. Now, firstly, as it as it mentioned in that video, you have some compulsory subjects. So English, and as with a lot of schools in the country, English um, language and English literature are compulsory. So that would give you the equivalent of two GCSEs. They're two separate qualifications. So you'll do a, a GCSE in English language and a GCSE in English literature. So when you go into your uh, English lessons, you'll be studying for those qualifications. Maps is compulsory. Science is compulsory. So in terms of with science, um, there's, there's the core where you, you pick science and it's the equivalent of two qualifications, but you can pick uh, the separate science, which comes out as three qualifications. I'll talk about science separately in a moment. Physical education, um, there's core PE where all students do PE. You can select it as an option, but all uh, students will be doing um, a lesson of PE, um, which is which is core on the timetable. Students will also be doing PSHE and citizenship. So they're compulsory subjects that will continue into their key stage four. So there are three pathways which I'm going to talk about. So there's the EBAC pathway, open pathway and resource based pathway. So as was mentioned in the opening slides, this is your chance to take control of what you want to pick. You've had a very broad uh, balanced curriculum in terms of key stage three. That will continue with those compulsory subjects and what you pick, but there are um, certain um, limitations in terms of what you can pick on certain pathways, which we're going to talk about um, now. So which pathway? So first of all, any students who are in the resource base, um, who, who currently studies in the resource base, must choose the resource base pathway. So the set uh, subjects in each option block, which must be picked if you're uh, currently studying in the resource base. So when you pick your subjects on the final option form, these have resource base next to them to identify the option you need to pick in each option block. 
Then any pre pupil can choose the EBAC pathway. So any student can choose to do the EBAC pathway, which I'll talk a little bit more about the EBAC in a moment. So if you want to choose the EBAC pathway, this is open to any student. But if you're currently in set one or set two for French or Spanish, it's compulsory. So if you're currently in set one or set two for French or Spanish, the EVAC is compulsory. So you have to pick French or Spanish if you are in set one or two. For all other pupils, you can choose an open pathway so you can select four subjects from across the option blocks. OK, so just to recap on those, if you're in a resource base um, currently studying, you have to choose the resource based subjects in each pathway. If you're in set one or set two for language, you need to pick the EBAC pathway. And for all other students, you have the open pathway. So what is the e-baccalaureate, in English baccalaureate, it's referred to the EBAC. Uh, it's not a qualification in, 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 in itself, but it's a measure of success in core academic subjects. So it's a very academic pathway. It recognises where uh, pupils have secured a grade five or higher across a core of academic subjects. So this is English, maths, history or geography, the sciences and a language. OK, so it's a humanities in terms of history or geography and a language to combine with the core of English, maths and science. So it recognises pupils who have uh, an academic of five or above grade in the academic subjects of English, maths, history and geography, sciences and a language. So as this bottom point says, it's deemed to be the more academic pathway the subjects involved are seen as more significant by top universities. So Russell Group universities, um, or sometimes referred to as red brick universities, that can favour um, these more academic qualifications. Okay, And that's what the English baccalaureate is in terms of picking those. So to say that you've, you've completed the EBAC, you've, you've passed five or above in English, maths, science, history or geography, and a language. Now, this um, sheet is on the website, which I'll talk about where it is in a moment. It's also got the link at the bottom where you can click or copy that link um, to go to the final option um, selection, because this isn't the final option uh, selection. This is just really to help you if you wanted to print it out just to have a look and write it down on paper and plan out what you want to pick before you make your final choices. So if you want to put all your four choices in here, write them in before you actually go online and pick your final choices. This is to support you with that planning. So you can see the subjects that you can pick in each option block. So you pick a subject, one of these subjects for option A, one of these subjects for option B, one of these subjects for option C, and one of these subjects for option D. As it says here, and as I just talked about the EBAC pathway, which is compulsory, everyone can pick it, but it's compulsory for students in set one and set two for French and Spanish. So within your four options, you must have at least one humanity, history or geography, at least one language. You can only select Latin if you've studied it in year nine. So for any students who studied Latin in year nine, it can be studied in addition to French or Spanish. So Latin is out of the question if you didn't study that subject in year nine. So as it says, if you're in set one or set two for French or Spanish, you need to pick French or Spanish and history or geography. So it still gives you plenty of scope because of the way the option blocks have, have been produced. So you will see French is in two option blocks. Spanish is in option block A and it's also in option block B. So you can pick um, them in either of those option blocks. And then you will see history and geography. You've got them in option block A, but you've also got history in option block C and geography in option block D. So even with the even though it's the E back and you have to pick geography, uh, history or geography and French or Spanish, because they're in multiple option blocks, it still gives you a little bit of flexibility. 
The other thing to mention is this asterisk down here, which says students can only select one of these subjects across all the option blocks. So you can, you can only pick one of these subjects with the asterisk. That is because they are deemed too similar to pick more than one. So they're 3D, art and graphics. So you can only select one of those if you're interested in that area of work because there would be no point picking more than one of these because they're seen as too similar. So you can only pick one of the subject, subjects with an asterisk. As I said, this sheet is just for planning out. Um, and the final um, submission is on this sheet, which is completed, as I said, the deadline, Monday the 13th of March. OK, but at least this this sheet gives you um, a more of a visual for mapping it out, where, whereas the final option selection is from a drop down menu, which is more difficult to map out. So at least seeing this gives you a visual where you can map out and plan the, the choices you are going to make in option block A, B, C and D. As I said, I wanted to give more information about um, science. Um, so Mr. Johnson, um, head of science, um, wanted this information to be portrayed. So any resource based students will study entry level science as a compulsory subject. All other students will study compulsory combined science worth two full GCSEs. So as we said earlier, it's compulsory that you have to study science which is the combined science worth two GCSEs. If you wish to study separate sciences, so by doing a third science option, which is in block A, you're only allowed to do this if your minimum expected grade in science um, is a grade five or higher. Now, if you don't know this, teachers will be sharing these megs with you individually in your science lessons. So if you don't know your minimum expected grade in science, you can find out off your teacher. So if you don't have a minimum expected grade of five in science, uh, you you be advised not to pick um, science as a separate science in terms of picking science uh, in option block A as the third science. Okay, any questions uh, regarding science, please pop them in the chat. So in terms of the support available to you, so obviously we've had the assembly and we're having this webinar now, but you may still have questions. There's lots of support, as I said, in terms of information on the website, there's lots, but also there's myself. So any students who want to um, speak to me in school, that's absolutely fine. You've also got your pastoral leaders in terms of Miss Lynch. Um, head of year nine, Miss Nagra, an assistant head of year nine. You can speak to your form tutors and also your subject teachers. So as I said, you've got the opportunity on Thursday in parents evening, but also um, if you need want to speak to them during your lessons, you can do. Now, this is the key area in terms of information available online. If you click on the pupil section on the website, and click on year nine, year nine options here. This is where all the information is available. This is where you submit your the link to submit your final option choices. So click on pupils, and then you will see year nine options here. This is the key area on the website to go to. Now, once you um, go to that, you will see on there, um, this is on that page in terms of English, maths, science and all the other optional subjects. If you click on these, you will be able to watch a video that tells you about the subject. Now, I know, you'll, you, as I said, you've had um, a broad curriculum um, in terms of a key stage three and being to these subjects, but these videos will tell you more maybe in, t in terms of the exam board and the makeup of the course. So you'll have knowledge about what the, the subject is like, but not necessarily what you're going to be covering at key stage four. So, for example, you might enjoy history at key stage three, but what topics will you be covering at key stage four? So if you watch these videos, it will tell you more about the courses. In addition, um, I'll show you where you access this uh, booklet in a moment, but you can access this booklet. It's about 30 pounds in length. It tells you all about the things I've said today in terms of the EBAC, open pathway, resource based pathway. And each, there's a page similar to this, what I've put here for business, 
where it tells you what um, to think about when you're picking a subject, how it's assessed, the themes. It will tell you the examination board um, and a number, a variety of other information, what people say about the subject. So there's a vast variety, a vast amount of information in this video, in those videos, and also in this booklet. So in this booklet, you access this um, towards the bottom of the page. And it's under Year 9 Pathways Information Booklet 2023-24. There's links to other information here. So I've talked about the eBAC. If you want to find out more information about the English Baccalaureate, you can click here and it'll give you information regarding that. This is a link to the Pathways Assembly, which I delivered to students um, before half term. And this is the pathway sheet I've shown you in terms of which shows the option blocks. So if you want to open that up from there, you can do. So you click that and then you can print that out if you want and, and plan out the four option choices before you make that final selection. In terms of making that final selection, this is where you do it on the page in terms of year nine final options. This is just a snapshot of the, the, the actual web page. So when you go to the web page, you will see the videos and then you will see below the videos these downloads. So just to recap, the eBAC information, the assembly which are delivered to students, the Pathways Information Booklet, a very key document to look at, and also the Pathway Sheet for you to map out uh, what you want to do, and then the link to make your final option choices. So just to, um, to finish up, just to um, remind you that Monday the 13th of March is the deadline. It's submitted online via the Academy website. So as I just said, you go to pupils and the year nine options area, which I've just shown you uh, on the previous slides. And that is it. I'd just like to uh, thank you for listening. Um, as I said, if you have any questions left, if you pop, pop them into the Q&A and um, we will answer those um, as best we can. But just a reminder, we have parents evening on Thursday. So any specific questions you have regarding subjects, you can uh, ask your subject teachers on Thursday. Um, I'm now going to stop um, the video myself and mute. But as I say, if you want to, uh, we'll keep this running uh, for a few minutes yet. So if you want to pop any questions into the Q&A, uh, we will do our best to answer those questions. Many thanks for joining us this evening. And um, I wish you all the very best for your future and hopefully um, speak to you on Thursday. Thank you.